Hey friends, welcome to day 22. Today's reading is entitled, Mary Chose the Better Part. We read in the gospel that Martha, into whose house our Lord had entered, was busy and troubled about many things in her anxiety to serve him, whilst her sister Mary remained at his feet, listening to his words. Martha was concerned about our Lord's bodily comfort, but Mary, laying aside every other thought, nourished her soul with the sacred instructions of her divine master. A soul recollected interiorly before God is sometimes so sweetly attentive to the goodness of her beloved as not even to be aware of its intent of its attentiveness. So simply and gently as it is exercised, such souls are like those who navigate rivers the waters of which flow on so calmly that they neither see nor feel any motion. This delightful repose of the soul is called by St. Teresa the prayer of quiet. Martha, moved by a slight sentiment of envy, which is an almost universal vice affecting even devout souls, complained thus to our Lord, Master, hast thou no care that my sister hath left me alone to serve? Speak to her, therefore, that she help me. Our Lord, who is infinite goodness, would not reprehend her seriously, although he knew the imperfection of her sentiments, but he called her by name gently and affectionately, for the whole gospel is love, and said to her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the better part, which shall not be taken from her. Martha, Martha, solicita es et turbaris erga, Plurima poro unum est necessarium. Maria optimam partem elegit quid non effartur ab ea. Whilst Martha was thus busy serving our divine Savior, Mary had but one thought, to remain with him and hear his words. This was also the one thought of our blessed lady, the most holy virgin. Observe her at Bethlehem, where all her efforts to find a lodging were vain. She says not a word utters no complaint, but retires into a stable and places the newborn infant in a manger. After a few days, the Magi come to adore him, and she receives in silence the praises addressed to her. She flies into Egypt, but shows no sign of grief. She returns to Judea without any manifestation of joy. On Calvary, at the feet of her divine son, she opens not her mouth, but listens to his words, for to hear them is all her desire. Indifferent to all things else, happen what will, says she, whether he console me or afflict me, I am equally contented, provided I be near him and possess him. Thus does a soul abandoned to the will of God remain in his arms like a child on the bosom of his mother. When she places him on the ground, he walks, and when she takes him again in her arms, he allows himself to be carried and is in no way troubled to know whither he is taken. Thus the soul cultivates tranquility of heart and advances continually in union with the divine goodness. The exercise of union with God can be practiced by means of short but frequent aspirations of the soul to God, such as, Ah, Jesus, who will give me to be but one spirit with thee? I renounce all creatures and desire thee alone, for this is the one thing needful. Ah, Plunge my soul into the ocean of thy goodness from whence it proceeds, and make me, O Lord, wholly thine. Draw me, and I will run after thy attractions, casting myself into thy paternal arms, and never again withdrawing myself from them. A soul immersed in God dies not. How could it die if immersed in him who is life? It lives then, but not in itself. As the planets do not shine in the presence of the sun, but the sun shines in them, So does it live, not indeed a natural life, but the life of Jesus Christ who lives in it. In imitation of the Blessed Virgin, we must make it our whole study to unite ourselves to our Lord by advancing in perfection. Let us not, however, forget that our best means for attaining to this is to remain tranquil and place all our confidence in Him who alone can give increase to that which we have sown and planted. Our Lord desires from us a peaceful solicitude which will lead us to obey those who direct us and walk with all fidelity in the paths they point out. We should abandon ourselves in all things to his paternal care and maintain peace of soul as far as possible because our Lord reposes in tranquil and peaceful hearts. When the waters of a lake are not agitated by the wind, 
the firmament with its stars is so vividly represented therein that looking down into the deep, we can see its beauty as perfectly as if we were looking up to the heavens. So also when our souls are tranquil and undisturbed by superfluous cares or distractions, we are then well prepared to receive within us the image of our Lord. But if the soul be disquieted, darkened, and agitated by the various tempests of the passions and allows itself to be guided by them and not by reason, which renders us like to God, it cannot reflect the beautiful image of Jesus Christ crucified and his most excellent virtues, nor can he rest in the soul. We must abandon the thought of ourselves to divine providence for anxiety of mind and the desire to know if we advance in virtue is not pleasing to God and serves only to satisfy self-love, which is a great busy body that seeks to have a hand in everything. One work well done with peace of mind is more meritorious than many works performed with agitation and anxiety. Spiritual flowers. When the lily springs up from the earth, it produces a number of long leaves, but as it grows higher, the leaves near the flower are fewer and much smaller. These leaves represent our words. The more a soul progresses in the way of God and of perfection, the fewer are her words. Pere Saint Ure. As the bees go all round their hive gathering honey here and there, and when they have collected it, take pleasure in working it up on account of its sweetness, so we meditate that we may acquire the love of God, and then we contemplate him and are attracted by his goodness through the sweetness which his love causes us to experience. Hence, the soul is never satiated with considering and looking upon the divine beauty, St. Francis of Sales. The occupations that are necessary for each one in his state of life are no hindrance to piety, but increase it and adorn the work of devotion. The nightingale loves its own melody when it is silent as much as when it sings. The devout heart also cherishes divine love no less when it is distracted by the external duties of life than when it prays. Its action and its contemplation, its occupation, as well as its repose, equally chant the canticle of love. St. Francis of Sales. Example, beauty of the Ave Marie Stella. In this hymn are celebrated all the prerogatives of Mary. She is the powerful mother of God and the most glorious of virgins. De Mater Alma at Que Semper Virgo, and at the same time, the most sweet and humble of virgins, Virgo Singularis Inter Omnes Mitis. The Most Holy Virgin performs the function of advocate with her divine Son in our favor and offers him our prayers. Monstra te esse matrem. She is the gate of heaven. She loosens the chains of sinners, guides the blind in the way of virtue, removes every kind of evil from us, and asks in our name for every grace necessary for us to reach the port of eternal life. Solve vinla reis. Nothing is more appropriate to inspire us with a tender confidence than Mary in the Ave Maris Stella, for its verses contain considerations of time and eternity. Let us then repeat it often, and Mary will load us with benedictions, as many miraculous facts in the lives of the saints attest. Indeed, this Queen of Heaven herself showed how dear to her is this hymn when she appeared one day to St. Bridget and thus addressed her, My son, the sovereign master of heaven, of earth, and of hell, can himself alone suppress all the powers of evil from whatever source they may arise. I shall henceforth be a shield of defense for you and for the others against all the attempts of the enemies of your souls and bodies, on condition, however, that all your community meet together to sing every evening the Ave Maris Stella. The saint did not fail to fulfill punctually the will of the Most Holy Virgin, and her example was followed by her confessor and her daughter, St. Catherine of Sweden, who caused this pious practice to be adopted by all the convents of the Order of St. Savior. Let us then be glad to salute our most amiable mother frequently with this hymn of the Holy Abbot of Clairvaux. However, we must not be satisfied with merely singing it. Let us also carry it in our minds and in our hearts, and above all, strive to be penetrated with all the affectionate sentiments it contains. Let us pray to St. Bernard to recommend us himself to the Queen of the Angels, and obtain for us that she may be to us all that she was to him to the last instant of his life. Most Blessed Virgin, be my strength, my guide, my mother, and let me never become unworthy to bear the beautiful title of child of Mary, 
Monstra te esse matrem. Prayer. O Holy Virgin and Mother of God, deign to succor those who implore your assistance, cast an eye of compassion upon us, and be moved at the sight of our miseries, O Mother of Grace. Have you forgotten men in their tribulations and need by reason of the sublime dignity to which you have been raised? No. Without doubt, your heart will be ever interested in our favor, nor can your great mercy ever forget misery so profound as ours. Turn then towards us and consider the many dangers to which we are continually exposed. God Almighty has constituted you the depository of his power and of his graces. Pour them upon us in abundance, we beg of you. The more powerful you are, the more do I trust, O Mother of Mercy, that you will be singularly merciful to your afflicted children who have recourse to you. Amen. Ejaculation. O Mary, you are able to succor me, and I hope your goodness will not refuse me this favor. Practice. Endure to recollect yourself frequently during the day that you may act with greater purity of intention. Thanks a lot, my friends. God bless you all in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll see you back here tomorrow.